All right, why don't we go ahead and get started? I'll I'll just open this up. My, my name is Caleb Jennings. I'm with the CAMS Jennings Group at Guaranteed Rate. Uh, we're the CAMS Jennings Group. I'm the Jennings. John CAMS is on the call as well. John, you want to give a wave? Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming out. I'm John. So I, I wanted to just open this up and uh, introduce our expert renovation specialist, Chris DePape. And before I, before I turn it over to her, really, you know, what we all know right now is that we're in a tough market and we got rates are higher and and to boot we've our low inventory we're at historical lows on inventory and we know that when we have that buyer that's pre-approved and ready to go we're running into the issue of inventory and what we know is that agents that have partnered with us and have been thinking strategically on how to create more inventory for their buyers they've they've been getting involved with doing renovation loans and we're really fortunate to have Chris on our team. She's an expert. She she brought in the renovation loans into guaranteed rates. So I'm going to hand it over to Chris and she can take it away. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Thanks, Caleb. Um, thanks, everyone, for taking the time out. Yeah, I came over in 2011 to guaranteed rate and opened up the renovation program and brought a couple different products. We have the FHA 203K, which seems to be something everyone's heard of, but there's also conventional renovation. So we opened up, you know, all the programs here and I've been here about 12 years. So I'd love to get started if that's good with everybody showing you guys some before and after photos of some renovation projects that have been done. It's been great. Our clients are really nice to share some of these. So I'll just, you know, start with this while people join in. Um, here's a house that was for sale, just a small single, you know, family home they were able to do a two-story addition and then go off the back as well to increase space. And once you go off the back and increase space, they were able to dig down and do like a 20 by 20 family room. So here's the before picture and here's the after, and it is the same house, okay? <laughs> um, here's a house that we did that, that it was a tear down, but we had to keep the original foundation because this was FHA, they, they only allow for a tear down with original foundation remaining, but then they were able to rebuild it. And here are the after photos. So this was a really nice project as well that turned out great for our clients. Um, this property was in St. Louis, so we can do any state um, for anybody out there. You know, if you know of anyone in any area, we cover all 50 states, but this home was like a 1926 original. So we'll show you, they took it from 1,456 square feet, added some square feet and just redid everything. So here is the before photos and here's the after. Just, you know, definitely if you can see, you know, outdated and now more brought up to the modern look. Uh, here's the, the backyard. They did some pavers and, you know, you can do landscaping and such. So just want to make sure we show what happens once you go from that to this. It's pretty amazing. Uh, here's one that we did that was about $150,000 uh, project. So this is the home that was purchased as is. You can purchase in any condition. Like this would not have passed a normal appraisal. And then here they did a gut rehab. So they did the entire, redid the entire home. So we'll talk a little bit about the programs and how we get to those lovely photos. So we have conventional renovation. Those are called Fannie Mae Home Style and Freddie Mac Choice. We also have FHA 203K, which there's a limited um, version, which is $35,000 or less for work with no structural allowed. And then there's called a standard, which is no limit to the amount of work and any structural is allowed. So, and if you guys have any questions, you can throw them in the chat box. We'll address the questions when I finish. We'll have a nice, you know, 15 minute opportunity to, you know, do scenarios and, and ask some questions. So in addition, we also offer our jumbo renovation and new construction. It was suspended during COVID, but obviously it's back and we can do primary residence or second homes. They don't allow condos and we can do loans up to $2 million. Uh, so it's a really great program for construction. And we also offer the VA renovation. So those are for veterans that are trying to buy a home. It is capped up to $50,000 in repairs. And it's just cosmetic. They don't allow for structural because for VA, they really need the work done in the first 120 days. So it's mostly cosmetic and things to help pass the VA appraisal. So those are just a recap of some of the programs. Some common loan features for all the programs that it's offered on purchase or refinance. 
it is one fixed rate mortgage loan. It's a 30 year fixed rate loan. And it will allow to purchase a home and add all of the work. And you just have one low down payment. On a refinance, it's also one loan. So I get a lot of questions like people have said, oh, you know, someone wants a refi, but they don't want to touch their first mortgage because the rate's at three and a half. Well, construction will never go behind a first mortgage, so they would need to refinance, but it is offered on refis as well. We utilize what's called a HUD consultant. I'll talk a little bit about, about his role. And the work is started once the loan is closed and permits are obtained. So it's not done prior to closing. You close, then when you're the owner, you get the permits or your GC or architect get the permits, then they can start the work. Mortgage payments can be financed if the property is not habitable and only if the appraised value supports those payments. So a lot of people think it's automatic, but the value has to support that the payments are rolled in. Uh, we do usually roll in payments and let's say the appraisal only allows for four payments. Well, then we'll roll in four. So we will explain that to you know, each client individually. For all the programs, there is some money up front. For 203K Limited, they get 50% of the funds up front. And then once permits are obtained, and of course, when the GC is uh, done with the work, then they get the balance. For the FHA 203K Standard, that's the larger one. They will only get 50% of major material costs, which are windows, flooring, kitchen cabinets, and roofing. And they'll write that up as a first draw with 50% of the funds to be released once permits are obtained. The big thing is permits, permits, permits. They follow the rule and county, uh, city, municipality guidelines of whatever is required. So that's why permits are needed. For Fannie Mae and Freddie, those are the uh, conventional programs. They will give 50% of material cost once permits are obtained with the first draw with the maximum draw of 50,000. So they will all get money, which is great for the GCs. Now, a couple notes here. The borrower can be their own GC if they're a licensed GC or if they're in the trades, like they're a licensed electrician or you know, even a licensed architect, people who know how to run projects, they'll, they'll allow for self-help. On our jumbo, they cannot be their own GC. That is not an option on the jumbo program. For the uh, choice renovation home style 203K, Again, we've discussed, you've gotta be a GC or in the trades. I get a lot of questions for people who are like, well, I've done rehab before on other homes, so I wanna do this one, but they're not in the trades. And the reason is you have to have certain insurance. You have to have the time to get these done in the first you know, six months is what they give you. They will extend month by month, but if you're not in the trades and you have a full-time job, it's gonna be very difficult for the house to get done. That's why they don't allow it. A family member can be a GC on the conventional program, but not on the 203K program. And a tenant on the 203K cannot buy from a landlord. It is allowed on regular FHA, but they don't allow it on the 203K for rehab. So when I have tenants buying who want to maybe just update the home, but the home will pass, they'll close on a regular FHA loan and then we'll refinance them into a 203K. And on this program, the realtor can be a blood relative to the borrower and gift their commission to aid in buying the, the property. We do have to check that every year because HUD keeps going back and forth. So, you know, if we have any questions on that, we will make sure we confirm it. Um, just a little bit more about the renovation lending. It's not income-based, you know, like some programs. So any income level, it's an affordable solution to help with homes that are, you know, in disrepair or just outdated, you know, maybe these estate sales, et cetera. We can finance properties that need major repair or minor repair, or if it just needs updating. You know, you just have a lot of outdated properties, and with inventory low, you know, people walk in and are like, "I don't have a hundred grand to update this." Well, we can give them that, and the down payment is very low. And we'll go through that a little bit more. So the renovation loan will include the cost to purchase, the cost to repair the home, and then we give a contingency for cost overruns. We, we will pay them for the permits. We will pay for any architect. We pay for like draw inspection. So we it's all inclusive. Everything will be wrapped into the loan and the home buyers can close as is. And why that's important is if you see listings that say cash only, maybe the agents don't know that renovation's out there. And if you buy with a finance buyer, you're typically going to get more money versus a cash buyer because cash buyers are looking for their you know, I got cash, you're going to discount this tremendously, and then I'm going to, you know, 
lipstick rehab and then flip it, right? But if you go with financing, you're going to get higher offers for your seller. So again, it doesn't matter if there's no electricity, no gas, you can have mold, you can have water damage, missing kitchens, it does not matter. We can close any property in any condition because the work will correct the home. We can even take homes with violations for like two, three unit in Chicago. They have a lot of issues with the rear deck. If they're not to compliance, they'll have a violation on title. We can take uh, any property with violations on title because we will uh, repair the property. And then the buyer goes to court and gets all that waived off of title, like that gets corrected. So down payments can be low as 3%. Credit score, now there's different variations. So this is just generic and then I'll fit to whatever case we have. But we do have 3% down, 3.5% down. We can go to 620 FICO, case by case to 580. Renovation rates right now are about 3 eighths to a half percent higher, um, but they do charge typically a little bit of a discount fee right now just due to the pricing in the industry with there's a lot of you know things going on with inverted yields and such. So we're only about a half a percent higher, which is great. The repairs and improvements are done after the loan closes. So the seller gets paid at closing, the realtors get paid at closing, and then we establish an escrow for the construction money. So um, I work for John, I'm his renovation specialist. Again, I opened up the program 12 years ago. We will work with the clients to make sure that they get their detailed specification of repairs, which is the, a consultant coming out. A lot of people ask, well, this consultant who comes out, it's right away, but realtors are automatically giving a home inspection number. It's better to get the consultant out first because that's required. And if that cost write-up goes okay, then you can run out a home inspector for all the, you know, maybe little things that like if a stove doesn't light up, you know, our consultant's there to give you major costs. Like if you're doing a new uh, kitchen or new flooring, new roof, he's giving cost analysis. He does still check crawl spaces, exterior, you know, his job is to look at the whole house. But if you still want an inspection, that's your choice. If it's a gut rehab, nobody does an inspection because you're, you're going to be gutting the home. So occupancy types, we do one to four units. Second homes are available for one unit investment one unit only i get a lot of questions on two three and four units we have no outlet for two three and four unit investment we can do puds or condos condos are typically done on our conventional program because fha 203k only does condos up to four units and most of those are not even fha approved so typically we're doing condos on our conventional we can also finance mixed use properties for fha Two unit is typically the only ones that'll work because of a test that they do. But if you have a two unit FHA and the commercial space is only 49%, we can do that. But FHA will not give any money for commercial space, only for residential. So it gets a little tricky. So if anyone is interested in mixed use, we can talk more about that. Here are the new loan limits for 2023. Um, they did increase nicely. So FHA on a four unit, we can go up to 907, 900. And the conventional, uh, we can go up a million three ninety six eight hundred on a four unit. Down payments vary; it depends on which program you're using, and it also depends county to county. You know, in different states, we might have higher loan limits and lower loan limits. Um, so, for our agents on the call, obvious right now, if there's you know inventory issues or a lot of outdated, you know, homes, this is great for maybe your buyers who want a certain neighborhood or need to be close to their parents or they like a school district, but they can't find a house that they like, they can use this program and make the house their own. They can pick their own finishes, update it, you know, do an addition, build a garage. So these are all available. We can do as little, you know, I had a $500 broken pipe that an REO bank would not fix. So we did a renovation loan. It was kind of silly, but they wouldn't fix it. Without water, the home's deemed uninhabitable and you can't even do a hold back because it's a health and safety. We can do major jobs. Back in the day, 300,000 was my biggest, but last year we did a home in New York and the work was about 800,000. So again, there's a lot of major stuff on our jumbos. We've done, our max work is a million and a half on jumbo and we have done uh, jumbo construction and renovation. So there's a lot of different options. If you're a listing agent and you know, I tell this story often. We had um, three family members. The parents had passed, you know, outdated home and they wanted to sell it. Of course, they all have an agent. 
And they brought the agents in, met with them. And, you know, everyone's like, well, two agents, you know, hey, this is distressed, you know, cash buyer most likely might not move for a while. Kind of more negative where our agent who attended the webinar brought the before and after photos, explained about this program and said, we're going to market it to try to get the best amount we can and help the new homeowner, you know, update the home. Well, who got the listing? Our agent, you know, who attended this just from their knowledge. So I hope that just this knowledge can separate you from your competition if you're, you know, being interviewed to list or, you know, be a, a help a home buyer. We can also give the, uh, you know, we have open house flyers. We can give the before and after photos. You know, Caleb and John would help you guys with that because it's in, in rack, um, you guys. Um, so here's an example of an agent. This was in Michigan and Ann Arbor that, you know, bring your contractor and architect and, you know, they're kind of like leading letting people know the house needed updating so they don't walk in and walk out and you can also put renovation financing available you know because people don't know it's available so by saying that it is you know can help more buyers come into your property so any property you know let's help you close more transitions you know obviously it's slowing down a bit any property in any condition is fine to be bought or sold and any renovations can be done on our 203k or conventional as long as the foundation remains in place now new constructions on our jumbo so we can do that if there's you know the higher loan limits um, and we can refinance homes based on future value so when people ask about that if you're doing an addition let's say you owe 400,000 and the additions 200 but you owe like 300 there's not an equity loan out there to help you get that so we can use the future value based on the addition you're doing to finance that. And for listing agents, this is great for REOs if you have any or foreclosures, estate sales, outdated properties. You know, try to use this as a marketing tool to help get the listing move quicker and you know increase the power of the the clients walking in, so you don't have to maybe take a bad cash offer. So you're paid when the home closes, you know, like a normal transaction. And these typically take about 45 to 60 days to close. Um, and then, you know, we'll open it up now for questions. If anybody has, you know, this is kind of just so you know about it. There's a lot more detail that can be done, but I just kind of wanted to give a cliff note of it, the programs that we have. And Caleb, you're muted. I don't know if you want to unmute or John. Yeah. So if anyone has any questions here, you can drop them in the chat or you can even feel free to yeah, unmute. Yeah, they can just unmute if they don't if mind. Yeah, you can unmute. We can hear you. Um, but I know that from our, our agents that have used this, they've been able to definitely help their buyers. Uh, Kathleen Studer has a question. So loan is also based on income too, right? No, there's no income restriction. It's any income, doesn't matter. There's no income restriction. Yeah, they, but we would qualify them just like we would to buy a home, right? Oh, I mean, yes, we have to. I mean, that's one. You. This is just. Yeah. Yeah. There's just no like, oh, you have a max income, like you're above the max income. Yeah, but no, no. I income. Think. Yeah, that's there's no income restriction. And then is there a ratio of allowable repair costs versus the home uh, for the conventional the repair cost cannot exceed 75% of the appraised value. So if we have a $700,000 appraised value, the work cannot be more than 490. And that would include 490 for everything, meaning the contingency reserve, the architect, et cetera. Uh, so yeah, it's 75% of the appraised value. After approved. Yeah, at the after approved. We only do yep. after approved. We never do an as is value. And FHA does not have that rule. It's only unconventional. So FHA does not have a percentage. It just has to stay within the loan limit of the FHA um, in the county. Any other questions? I mean, I'll talk a little bit about the consultant. Why we use that person is that they're a GC by trade. And they will come out immediately to give you a write-up. It's like a 35-point write-up detailing, you know, broken out in labor material. So that way you can see if what's, you know, going to work for you. And we also check with the realtor to make sure that the value will be there, you know, that you're not over-improving. And then Kathleen had a question. How long are you given to complete the repairs? 
the standard time is going to say six months, but they will extend month to month up to 12 months. And obviously when COVID hit, you know, we were, some projects took longer because everything shut down. They, they, you know, they will adjust to whatever happens, but typically they want it done within a year, always hopeful within six months. But when we're doing an addition, those usually take about nine months, just because you have to get through architect, you know, and commission, you know, like to the municipality's approval. I have a question. Yes. Um, um, I, I've done quite a few of these and um, what, what seems to be the problem is um, the buyers can't seem to find uh, or have any resources for contractors. Um, I know we can't like directly um, refer anybody, but is there a resource where buyers can go and kind of like find contractors that do um, two or 3K loans or- Well, or realtors are allowed these? to refer contractors and the consultant can also- give a couple like a list with a couple on there and then the buyers can do their diligence you know on who they'd want to use um so that's the way we get it done pretty well because realtors are allowed to refer we just have the contractors have to fill out a package a so yeah package. there's going to be a vetting process of the yeah. contractor right chris yeah yeah but any contractor is eligible people think that there's only something called 203k contractors which that's not true they just have to fill out a package and understand the payment, you know, that they'll get some upfront money, but then they're paid as the work is performed in draws. So, you know, again, the consultant is helpful to, you know, in our area, the consultant will give a couple names. And we also typically ask the buyer, you know, to ask their friends and family. And we do encourage the realtors also to give a referral because typically realtors know contractors just through their office, you know, partners and colleagues. Chris, are you running into it? Because I've heard this objection before that, oh, you can't get any contractors. They're too busy. No, not. I mean, I would. Yeah. I mean, two years ago, it was crazy. I think that it's it's slowed down a bit where you're going to be able to get contractors. Um, Good. It's cyclical. You know, mm -hmm. things went a little crazy. People had money. COVID was here. They were stuck in their homes and, you know, everybody wanted to fix them up. Well, that's, you know, people are, you know, not in that same situation. So there's definitely not as bad as it was, John, for sure. So a couple other questions I'm seeing coming through. Uh, Kathleen had a follow-up question about the, the the length to complete repairs. What about dealing with lead-based paint or asbestos? Yeah, on conventional, they don't really address it, but on FHA, they do. If there is lead-based paint, the contractor or one of the subcontractors has to have mm -hmm. a lead-based paint cert. Uh, and if there is asbestos, they would need someone who, you know, handles that to get it out same thing with mold like right now we have a house with mold in it so it needs to be remediated by someone with a certificate in mold remediation so it's done right you know removed correctly disposed of correctly etc and miguel you're you're asking can you share material that i can share with my clients as a realtor yes we've got materials that we can get to you and we can co-brand it with you as well um regarding the renovation loans and what have you and we can definitely connect you with christine too yeah, I think my information is somewhere here on this. We'll send this out to, you know, Caleb, you can send this out to everybody. Yeah, we're going to send everybody a copy of the presentation. And I definitely can also help you all with some co-branded materials from us on marketing materials too. I see that, Ian. Yes, we could definitely get that to you as well. Um, right, because Caleb, to, you know, Caleb and John will take, you know, the initial client if they just have questions, of course, I'll answer them. But if they fill out a loan application, you know, Caleb and John make sure that that's completed. And then they'll say, hey, they're interested in renovation or maybe they'll buy move in ready. We can get them ready for both. Like, that's what's great about it. If they work with us, they can do either. They can do a move in or a reno and we'll get them all the information they need. Yes, Kathleen, this is nationwide, right, Chris? Yeah. Chris, all 50 states. Chris, can you, um, but what would be some pitfalls that you can think of just so that uh, if you, if you have any tips for realtors, like things to be careful of, or. You know, the, the biggest thing I'm always checking value with you, like at the beginning of someone's buying a house and it's 350 and they're doing 150 of updates. I ask you, is that like, if, you know, this was new kitchen, new bathrooms, new roof, new flooring, new paint. 
what would that house sell? And you'd be like, oh, 525, you know? So that way it makes sense. But if you're like the highest sales 450 and we're at 525, that concerns me. Like, are they overpaying? So those are some things at the beginning that are a little tricky. For FHA 203K, three and four units have a difficult time with passing the self-sufficiency. And if you don't know what that is, I'd like to just take a moment to explain it. FHA has a rule. It has nothing to do about qualifying the borrower like with income. FHA has this thing called self-sufficiency test. FHA does not want defaults like on their loans. So three and four unit, they want market rent based on improvements. They will let you use that for all the units times 75%. So they assume a 25% vacancy factor. So let's say the rent is 5,000. You can only use 75% of that, which I don't have my calculator, but pretend that number is 4,000. But if your mortgage payment's 4,200, FHA automatically declines that file because it's $200 over. So three and four units, I'm in very close contact with the realtors before we even do anything to pre-approve the client because we walk through what the market rents are to make sure it passes that test. So those are a couple pitfalls right away. And obviously getting a contractor, which we discussed, the realtors can refer them. The consultant can give you a couple names. Obviously, you know, friends, family can offer you, you know, names. So there's a, a magnitude of ways you can get your contractor. Any other questions? I'm sorry, say that again. Do you guys refer the HUD consultants as well? Yeah, we have to refer the HUD consultant. Um, as strange as that sounds, there's a lot of bad ones out there. So we know a lot of the good ones and we give you the ones that are reputable, you know, and deliver the reports on time and that we've worked with for quite some time. And Ian, you asked about the down payment rate, the down payments in the slides. I, I think they are, but for FHA, it's standard. It's 3.5% down payment. For conventional, yeah, they could go as go as low as three percent down on a conventional, but often three to three to five percent is common. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, three and a half to five percent is most common. Three and a half FHA, and then for single family on conventional, and down payment is purchase price plus rehab. So we have to make sure that's the first thing I explain because I get a lot of, um, you know, people are like, "Well, I'm buying for three hundred thousand, so three and a half percent down is ten thousand five hundred." but they're doing work for 200 grand. So really the down payment is going to be like 18,000. We have to make sure we explain that. And I do very detailed worksheets um, for the clients because sometimes they might not have enough assets and you can get up to a 6% credit on FHA. So we can make it work, you know, by knowing what they have, knowing what credits are allowed. So we want to make sure that we have them 100% pre-approved. This loan is more expensive up front than conventional. So we do not mess around. When we pre-approve somebody, we get all their documents. And if they don't give us all their documents, they want to keep going, we let them know they're risking the consultant fee, you know, an architect fee, appraisal fee. You know, some people are just, I'll get that, you know, I'm fine. Don't worry about my, you know, I, I sent you enough to be dangerous. but. Most of the time we have all documents because we want to make sure that they're hundred percent ready to go. Yeah, I can tell you guys, I, I, I know how to do rehab loans. Do I want to do a rehab loan? No, I don't. I want to give it to, to Chris. And I, I know from experience as realtors, you're probably like, oh, great, a rehab loan. If you probably, somebody said though, I had a wrong, uh, yeah. selecting the wrong uh, general contractor. Chris's department, this is all they do. So you can go out there with confidence now and be like, hey, we got a rock solid back of the house here. That, that's all they do. And that's kind of what you have to do. What, what often happens is you get, a, you get a loan officer who's like me. I've done, I think, five or six of these in my career. I could get through one, but it would be very laborious. And, and I've got 20 years of experience. You get somebody who's, you know, this is their first or second one and that you these and they're not well vetted, it could turn into a nightmare. And then obviously 
the client isn't up, is, isn't happy. So um, I, I, I want to empower you go out, go out and tell people about this because I know it can help you close more transactions and you, you've got the, you've got the people who know what they're doing, doing it. Yeah, Miguel makes a great point too. I mean, the, yeah, a con general contractor can make or break it too. Like that's what's really key. I mean, I know that our experience has been, you know, making sure you get that lined up right away. So, so Chris, maybe like what, what has, I'm sure this has happened. Yeah. So you fund 50%, the contractor is gone. Like he, he does a well, little bit of the work. We will give them, you know, 50%, right? Yeah. Uh, you so know, let's I'm just say that happens. Let's just say that the, the client is left high and dry, right? This contractor dies. What happens? Do they have to go find another contractor? Well, yeah. Typically we recommend you try to get two GC bids. Here's why we had a woman get two GC bids and the one she liked was a little bit slower, was not as responsive, but you know, she liked his price and someone had referred him to her, but I said, why don't you get a backup? You know, she got the backup bid. And I said, the reason is in case something happens. Well, of course something did happen. The guy was overloaded and he kept, oh yeah, I'll start our start. And I said, look, he he's not starting. You have this backup contractor that you like, but he's a little bit more, but we're going to have to, you know, figure it out. You know, you might have to cut out a glass shower door because he's 5,000 more than the other bid. We'll put up a shower curtain or take it out of contingency, but you can switch contractors in an, you know, like if something weird happens, you know, we did have a contractor pass away during a project, brought in another contract to finish it. So yeah, things go wrong. And that's why the, the client picks the contractor. Guaranteed rate's not referring contractors because then you blame it on us when it has nothing to do with us. You know, So the contractor and client buyer are in the contract for the work. And of course, that's why we say vet them carefully. I know the ones that the consultant gives, You know, they're all still on our list and you know, we've not had any major complaints. Yeah, you're gonna have a squabble here and there. You know, We had a guy's like the tuck pointing I want four thousand dollars. Wasn't done right, you know. Yeah, nobody's point, ever happy when. Yeah, you know, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had a new bill that you know you're always going to find something wrong. But the point is, they complete the projects. Nothing's really gone wrong. So th there's there's resources. It just depends what bank you work with and how highly specialized they are in these. And we're very specialized in them. Uh, Twelve years and going. I mean, we're I think the number four lender in renovation for FHA. They don't have a gauge on conventional, but we're pretty high up and very, very high satisfaction numbers, which is hard to get on these loans, you know? Yeah, and no, it's- uh... Ty, you, Ty, you had a question. Yes, self-employed buyers also can qualify just like they would qualify to buy a home. Like, you know, we qualify them the same way. As long as they have the, the taxable income re right. reported and qualify, um, we can still qualify them too. Yep. I got one more question. Yes. Um, is there any way, um, can some of these possibly close in 30 days instead of 45? Not really. But I mean, got to be truthful on that. The only way we close in 30 days is, is if they had their contractor package to me the next day after they go on contract and the contractor bid within three days. If I could get that, which I've never gotten that, you can do it, you know, because it's on the contractors, not on us. I can close anything in three weeks if I had all the paperwork on <clears> one. <throat> yeah, I think it, maybe it. Chris, because I've talked with you before about this and um, the, like, when do you recommend them get a, like, should they be, if they're thinking a rehab loan, like, can, can we get them like, okay, you haven't even found a property yet, but here's the, the, the HUD consultant the, the, here's the consultant's well, number and he can refer you so they can kind of get those ducks in a row or I mean like, when do you HUD recommend the HUD consultant charges to come out so I have had people bring them out before going into contract to get their report but if the house goes under contract while you're doing all that then you just paid for something and you're not under contract how much is a HUD consultant approximately it's going to range between 400 and 2500 I know that's a big range but FHA max is about a thousand dollars. It's conventional write-ups when they are two, three, four hundred thousand. Then you're going to be in a higher range, like twenty five hundred. But average cost is about a thousand to fifteen hundred, um, because we okay. just do bigger projects. A lot of yep. people are not going to do renovation just to like paint their house. You know, just mm -hmm. you know, you're going to do bigger projects. Okay, so they go under contract, get a HUD consultant. 
And then I, I guess what I'm wondering is like, could they start vetting to speed up the process? Could they like could they could they vet contractors before that? Because well, yeah, they could try to get some names and like talk to people. Would they yeah. be interested in doing it? And it's a bank loan. Absolutely. Okay. But if they're in the Chicagoland area, the consultant will have um, some referrals for them too. Yeah, and I think that one of the other things I've seen is that uh, you want to get a contractor who's like either has experience with this or gets the fact that they're going to have to do some paperwork. Is that like? Oh yeah, they have a sign up package to show that they have experience and you know that we need their GC license, their liability certificate, you know, things to try to like make sure that they're up and up. I mean, it's still up to the borrower to vet them and make sure mm -hmm. they check Better Business Bureau. Like if you have a contractor who's oh, I've been in business for 10 years, but then we go and search them up and they've changed names seven of the 10 years, that's a pro that's a that's a questionable issue because contractors who change names a lot means like they could have had issues. And so they just, you know, created a new LLC. So you kind of want a contractor, you know, typically three to five years minimum experience would be good that they've not changed companies because that shows that they're solid. You know, they're not running from anything. That's a good tip. Any other questions? I have one more question. Please. Um, once um, the loan is done and the renovations are done, um, like I had a situation where the, the husband, he came home from overseas and he did not like the property. He did not like the location. Um, how long after they've done done the renovation or bought the pr property, they can sell the property? Um, it's actually about eight months from the time they actually bought the property. So if that rehab was done at month five, uh, it would be, they could list it like at month eight. And if they sell it at month nine or 10, it's fine. Hmm. Okay. Why is that Chris? Like, so like, let's say you, you finish in three months, I have to keep it for another five. I can't just turn around and list it. If I, well, I mean, technically you could, but then we could lose our program because they bought and sold and they weren't supposed to that they would consider that a flip and flips aren't allowed. Like you're signing a document saying that you're going to live there, but okay. around eight or nine months, they're not going to enforce that. Cause they'll be like, okay, that makes sense. Okay. But if you buy it and two months later you sell it, they will, you know, they consider it a flip. You. Yeah. And they can come after you because you committed fraud to get the loan. You know what I mean? You're saying you're going to live there. Right. Okay. Learn good something new every day. Yeah. These are good <laughs> questions. Any other questions? Okay. So I have one question for everybody. Who do you know that needs this loan? <laughs> I know a lot of houses need it. <laughs> yeah, Kathleen says that she does. Kathleen, we could circle back to you off of this call. And, and, yeah, she and said you're at, looking in you're looking in Texas, right, or something yeah. like that. Okay, she's got a stress property. Yeah, just you know, to wrap this up, at first I want to thank Chris for joining us. Chris is awesome. She's an expert, right. and we're we're really grateful to have her. Um, and, uh, you know, with us, the way that we operate is that John and I, we answer our phone seven days a week. You see that number on the screen, that 402 number. That's a, a line that rings both John and myself and our team, the loan officers on our team. So, you know, you you have a client that needs help. Give us a call. We're there to answer the phone. Um, and we'd be happy to guide them through this process. And they want to go, then we can hand them off to Chris. You can see Chris, Chris is awesome and she can get this done for you. So. Um, right now, you have buyers that are frustrated. They can't find that dream home. Well, they have an opportunity to, to create their own dream home. Um, and I really encourage you to, to leverage that. It's another, it's another tool in your toolbox. Chris, one more question before we go. What, are, what about seller concessions? Are... Oh, I'll, right now, hallelujah, they're back because you know during COVID, you couldn't even get an inspection. So uh, seller concessions, FHA allows up to 6% of the purchase same, price. Okay, cool. So same thing. Same as you. So like conventional, if you put three to 5% down, you can get 3%. If you put 10% down, you can get 6%. We are utilizing that a lot. The seller concessions, of course. Yeah. Cause I mean, you, you look at it from this way, guys, like you, you got somebody with what $300,000 home, they put 400,000, they put a thousand, a hundred thousand in that's 400,000. You get a 12% or you get a 3% seller credit. They only put 3% down. Um, that's only $12,000 to the table. Right. Yeah. 
and they get a hundred thousand dollars to rehab their their loan their home. And to the three percent down program that one is an income program, you know, because that's our our income program for first time buyer. So you know we do those, but since it's income, that is more. I think if I think you can still, as long as you're a first time home buyer, though, right? Or is that well, yeah, to... but those rates are going to be pretty obnoxious. So for the additional two yeah. percent, I'd rather get yep. a seller credit and use the tax proration to help them get in the house. Yeah. But last case scenario, right? Like yeah. the, you could do 3% down Absolutely. hypothetically. We, we yep. have one going right now. Oh, it's exciting. Awesome. Well, I want to I thank everyone for question. joining us. Oh yeah, please. I'm sorry. Yeah, Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. I have one more question. Yeah, please. Um, so are you saying the, the HUD consultant, when they come in and do their part, is, is that replacing like getting a home inspection? Yeah. Well, it's, it, for the most, you do it first, right? We do it first. And the reason is like, let's say your client thinks they can rehab a property for 50 grand. And in my head, I'm like, well, I think it's a hundred, you know, because, because clients always have a low number and I always have a high number just because I do this every day. Well, let's say their budget only allows for 50,000 and the write-up comes back at a hundred thousand. Well, number one, they can't afford it. And number two, they might cancel the contract. So the HUD consultant on a $50,000 write-up cost $800. Well, if you get your home inspection first, I'm not sure what they're charging. I mean, I just had one, you know- 500, did, four or 500. Yeah, I mean, someone just did a, a, you know, a full inspection for 500 and they had a sewer scope, some other stuff and everything looked great. But then when they then did the consultant second because they didn't know me in time, they went into contract and then decided to do reno. Once the consultant came out, when they realized how much it was gonna cost, they canceled, but they paid for all this other stuff that if they would have done the consultant first, they wouldn't have even done that stuff. So we do the consultant first. If it's a gut rehab, you don't need a home inspector because you're doing a gut rehab. You do need right. the consultant yeah. no matter what. So since a consultant's required, typically we start with him. And then from there, if, if they want a home inspection, they can get it. Typically they don't because the HUD consultant has covered everything, but they can do both. Yeah. And I encourage it just because you're buying something, you know, maybe from 1930. I'm I'm an over look at everything because I've bought homes and, you know, had issues come up. So now I I do the sewer scope, you know, I make sure someone's on that roof and I do everything. But some, again, gut rehab, you're never going to need it. On others, if you're just doing, hey, I need a new roof and I'm going to do a new bathroom, well, then get a home inspection if you want to know all the little things that your stove might not light or your fridge is 20 years old. You know, that's like, you know, the little itsy bitsy things. That's what they write up everything. And home inspectors are looking for stuff. You know, I feel like they are always looking for stuff to validate their fee, if that makes sense. And I only say that because I had a home inspection done before I sold my house. So I fixed everything. And then the home inspector came in and he was looking, you know, I, he, you know, he's looking for stuff. And I'm like, look, I fixed everything. And when I told him what I did, I'm like, you know, don't make stuff up. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, I know what you're up to, buddy. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're trying to earn your paycheck. We get yeah, it. Yeah, there you go. Um, no, that's great. And as far as on the HUD consultant, is that that wrapped into the closing costs or do you pay that up front? You pay that at the time he comes out. But mm -hmm. when you close, it reduces your cash to close. Because okay. it's a financeable fee, or you can choose not to finance it and just pay it like you would. Oh, that's so you'd get most, refunded at closing. Yeah, but normally people finance it. You know, people are trying to keep as much cash in their pocket. Yeah, cool. So you could say, Chris, like the that's like that's like the end all be all, right? Get the HUD consultant out first. Don't do anything. Don't you don't even tell the contractor. Get the HUD consultant yeah. out there, and then well, if you if you like the scope of the work. Then, then get a home inspector, assuming that it's not a gut rehab. Correct. And, and and you'll get the bid back from the consultant in about a week. And then he gives you a blank uh, bid. So he'll give you one thing called, it's called the specification of repair. We It's known as the SOR. That will have all the numbers like new kitchen, new bathroom, new roof, you know, new flooring. It's broken out in labor materials, square footage. You know, if you need drywall repair, electric, all of it's on there. Then he gives you a blank one to give to your contractor. And your contractor puts out, uh, his number is broken out in material and labor. That way at the end, we can see 
did, did we all understand the scope? Is it close enough in cost? You're like, consultant might say 150 and your contractor might say 162. Well, we're going to accept that. But if the consultant says 150 and your contractor says 250, we won't accept that. And we have to figure out why it's too far off. One yeah, more question that's the other is... thing I was going to say, guys, too, I was before I forget is that, Chris, I'm sure you can say, I mean, the, 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 the give on this is that if you want to be your own GC, there's a lot more risk, right? Than if you're like, oh, I have a lender who's like backing me and vetting the contractor and there's a HUD consultant versus like you being like, oh, I'm going to get $100,000 of my own money and go hire everybody. Um, do you think that that's the case? Well, I think for some people, when they do that, I mean, I had a woman who worked for me with my kids as a speech therapist, she gave a contractor $45,000 of own money and he disappeared. Well, when she started looking into it, guess what? He was the guy who kept changing his name, which is a red flag for us. Um, right. So she, when she looked him up on the Better, Better Business Bureau, the new company didn't really have much. He created some, you know, fake ratings or something, but when they finally realized and like, like looked up, he had different company names. So there is risk either way. I mean, at least if we're involved as a lender, we are trying to vet them with you and see red flags. We also have to, we search up public record. We had a contractor with three bankruptcies. We didn't approve him. If he's got three bankruptcies, I don't want him on your project. You know, <laughs> he, he's not good with money. So that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. There's risk everywhere. It's just, mm -hmm. we try to mitigate the risk with the program. We got one last question that came in. Is there a square foot limit? No, I mean, Kathleen, can you expand on that? Like specifically, if you have an example? I think she's And you can looking... unmute if you want to chat. I mean, I don't have any square foot limit. We're going to buy an old grade school. Oh, yeah. I mean, if that's not normal for the area, like I have people trying to convert churches into homes, but there's nothing like it. Like, so yeah, if there, if it has to be comparable, it has to be appraisable. It has to be normal for the neighborhood. So if there's a 12,000 square foot home in the neighborhood, then that we have a comparable. Yes. <laughs> Even better if there's two or three. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. Well, and that's the same thing. Like if you do log cabins, you can't have a log cabin somewhere where there's no other log cabins. Now in Virginia, there's a million log cabins. We can do that easily up there with renovation. But I had someone you know, trying to do one somewhere where there wasn't a log cabin anywhere. So I couldn't do it. If it's normal for the area and appraisable, we can do anything. Okay. Yeah, so no, you're, you're on your own on the school, on the grade school. Unless there's 12,000 square foot homes in the neighborhood. Exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're uh, coming up we're on the hour. Around, yeah. I mean, if they have questions or they think of follow up stuff, shoot us an email, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So we will, we recorded this. We'll shoot the recording out to folks. So you'll have a copy of it. Um, and you have our contact information and we'll circle back to you. And we'll, we'll be happy to partner with you, educate your clients. We can do co branded materials as well. Um, and like I said, our 402-882-5626 number, we answer that seven days a week. So we're never, never too busy for you and your pre-approvals. So yeah, one other thing, Chris, um, guys, if you ever want to do like other of these for, hey, we want to do a renovation loan product for buyers to generate leads, we could, I'm sure Chris would, you know, as long as we get it on the books, we could, we could do things like that to help you guys generate like a home buy, renovation home buying seminar Absolutely. type stuff. Absolutely. Oh, good. Absolutely. Yeah. So Ty, that's great. Yeah. So uh, Chris, re you reach out to Chris anytime or us and let's do it. Let's generate some business and let's all make some more money. All right. Thanks. All right, you guys we'll, cir we'll circle back with you on that, Ty. All right, guys. All right, all right everyone. Have a great Thanks, day. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Bye. Bye. Bye.